and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our special guest today is Claire Lopez, longtime Middle East expert, vice president at the Center for Security Policy, and our encyclopedia about what's going on with the Kurds, Syria, Turkey, and the United States response in the middle of all of this. Claire, thanks for coming back. Thank you, Barry, for having me on again. Yeah. Of course. So when we finished our, our last segment discussing what's happening in Syria between the Kurds, the Syrians, and the Turkish forces invading from the north, we were discussing how the world is starting to perceive what has happened. We touched a little bit on Israel, so let's start there. Israel believes that the American failure to honor their agreements and commitments to the Kurds may be indicative of a lack of loyalty in foreign policy when it comes to Middle East allies. Should Israel be nervous? You know, this this is this is gets to the heart of of I think uh, this this whole foreign policy issue. Um, you know, the the world may not know that President Trump campaigned back in 2016 um, on a promise to get America out of endless wars. He wanted to bring American troops home uh, from the Middle East, certainly other places too, like Afghanistan. Um, but the world may not know that. The world looks at uh, what the president just did in more immediate terms, I think, and that is um, they are absolutely, like Israel and, and probably others, questioning is America, uh, is President Trump a reliable ally, and can they trust him uh, to, to stand fast when the going gets tough in the future? Well, on that subject, and I think you're right, I think Israel ought to be a bit concerned, not only because of their insecurity about will Israel have America standing behind them in case of a major conflict, but also a respect by the Israeli military for what the Kurdish military has done against ISIS. Mm -hmm. and. The story from the IDF is so profound. There are many instances of IDF reservists. I know this is going to sound crazy. Volunteering to go into Syria to fight alongside the Kurds to defend the Kurdish positions against their Muslim brethren who are invading and slaughtering them. And I mean, there are a lot of these troops who are posting online asking permission to go and defend the Kurdish territory against the invasion. I'm, I'm not surprised. And um, that that sentiment echoes what we hear and see on social media, for example, um, from American uh, special operations forces who were the ones who, who were posted over there. And really, over a, um, you know a period of decades. I mean, we're going back to the early 1990s when um, you know American uh, troops were first uh, sent over there, special operations forces, uh, to stand by the Kurds of northern Iraq um, against Saddam Hussein at the time. So our military too has a long history of, of fighting with and by the side of the Kurds, and they've come to respect them a lot. Let's remember what the Kurds. Uh, call themselves, um, it, which is Peshmerga, and Peshmerga means those who face death. That is their reputation. They're tough fighters. Again, as I said before, in in the fight against the Islamic State, it was really the Kurds that did the bulk of the fighting, and our side uh, provided much else that was vital and necessary, intelligence and logistics and so forth. Uh, but but they did the hard fighting, um, and and the respect. Uh, that our guys, uh, you know, have for them is very much like what you're telling me for for the Israelis, um, and also the sense of, um, I mean, just dismay uh, that comes across in social media posts uh, from our special forces 
um, uh, who, who have now been pulled back and, and, and forced to leave uh, the side of those with whom they fought and slept and ate, uh, bled and died over years, and, and now they have to salute, say, yes, sir, Mr. President, and, and, and leave the Kurds to their fate. They feel terrible about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly obvious. You know, America promised to defend their allies, the Kurds, and it's been acknowledged inside the White House and coming out of the Pentagon that the Kurdish military um, regiments, uh, whether they are small or large, well-organized or more on the militia level, were indeed the Peshmerga were instrumental in helping to defeat ISIS. They now feel betrayed. For all intents and purposes, with us out of the way, Turkey has permission to go and kill them, although it's not overt. How's the rest of the world perceiving our abandonment of our allies? Well, you know, um, even even in uh, in Europe, um, there there has been a strong response um, uh, of um, uh, disapproval uh, for for the president's decision. And, you know, we here in America, we can understand, yes, this goes back to 2016, the presidential campaign, campaign trail promises. We all get that. And, and Americans, of course, you know, want their uh, loved ones back home from battlefields, of course. Um, but the rest of the world, and this is what, what really does matter, it's about perceptions, it's about perceptions of the United States as a partner, a reliable ally, and um, those perceptions have taken a hit. I mean, we can explain uh, all we, we want, well, but this is what he meant. This is what he promised um, till the cows come home, but, but the perception in the world is, did you stand and fight when um, the, the jihadist regime of, of uh, you know, Mohammed, I mean, um, a Muslim Brotherhood uh, supporting regime of, of uh, President Erdogan um, threatened. And, um, you know, when that threat was made, apparently over the telephone, this phone call of, I mean, that would have been the time to say, uh, you know, Mr. Erdogan, uh, our troops are there. They're staying there. They're not going anywhere. You come, you know, you come as far as you like, but we're not moving. And by the way, we're sending some more troops to augment them. So do what you like, but we're not moving, Mr. NATO ally, no more. Yeah, no kidding. And maybe that's why there is general unanimity on this, like we talked about previously. Republicans and Democrats in the House and the Senate literally are unified as if it's a non-issue. It's so rare that Dems and GOP cross the aisle link hands and say we are mad together as a as the legislative branch of the united states and want the president to change his mind and so far he hasn't the house of representatives uh, in the u.s congress passed a resolution today uh just as you say cross aisle democrats and republicans together joined in that resolution uh, expressing uh, disapproval of, of the president's decision. Exactly. Thanks, Claire. And thank you for joining us today on ATP Report. I would encourage all of you to type the word T-R-U-T-H, truth, in your text message cell phone. Send it to 88202. You'll be automatically signed up to get all of our ATP reports, like the one today all of our articles from all of our contributors, and it's always free. Again, for ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.